Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Nestra and today we are printing with PETG filament for the very first time. We just got a package, very exciting stuff. Now, I have never printed with PETG ever. It's my first time doing this. Uh, as many of you know already, I do own two 3D printers. I own uh, both FDM machines, but I do like to do a lot of statues and sculptures and such. Now, up to this point, I really didn't have any need for any, uh, any resin type of material. The prints came out quite nice and I could always fill. But recently, one of my Patreons announced they were releasing a figure that I was very excited about. And I needed some PETG, or at least some translucent type of material usually you can get away with resin and do the same thing but again i don't have any resin machines i only have these fdm printers so i figured i'd have to find an alternative and i came upon the overture uh petg i have always used overture i think it's like an amazon brand uh i've never had any issues with it so i went ahead and ordered it uh let's get this petg unpacked and let's see what we got Interesting. So interesting thing, uh, it came packed in like a aluminum foil type of paper, which I've never seen. Again, I've ordered from this brand a million times and I had never seen anything like this. All right, so I do know uh, from what I've read and what I've heard, it is very sensitive to temperature changes and fluctuations and such. Um, so I guess we'll have to see how this does, especially out here on a shed. So I guess I'll let you guys know. Um, I think the printer's ready for it, so I'll go ahead and unpack you. <laughs> oh, alrighty, here we go. So, it is not any regular PETG. It is actually a translucent red pet G, which, I mean, if you guys follow the same patrons I do, you know what this is for, and I am excited. Um, transparent red. The good thing about Overture, they usually tell you what the settings of your printer have to be. Now, I have all my printers dialed into what the, their PLA is, so I'll have to go in here and I'll actually show you uh, the settings that I change. All right, guys, I'm excited. Um, I'll stop talking now. I'm going to go ahead and load it into my printer. Now, just as a disclaimer, I'm going to be using my Sovel for this. It is a direct drive. I don't know how that would affect uh, the actual print process. Uh, but I'm assuming if you use a Bowden tube uh, system like the Ender 3, it should be the same thing. Let's get it loaded up and let's get it all ready. All right, guys, as you can all see, the filament is already on the printer. It seems to be extruding pretty well at 245 degrees, which is what I set it at. Let's go hop on Cura, change some settings, and print a test benchy to see if it works. All righty, guys, so here we go. This is my Cura right here. As you can see, I am using my Solo SVO3 profile. Uh, first thing we want to do, of course, is make sure that we have the, the correct uh, material selected. So I am in PLA. I'm just going to go to generic and choose pet G. Uh, that should automatically change some of the settings, uh, but we'll kind of go through it and, and make sure that everything's good. Now, just as a disclaimer, I'm not going to go through every single setting that I use for my particular uh, prints. Uh, as I mentioned before, that is something that I might do in a separate video. Today, I'm just going to focus on what I'm going to be changing for this particular uh, experiment if you can call it that now I do print most of my models with a 0.16 layer height I found I find that it is a very good compromise between uh, speed uh, in terms of print time and quality so I'm gonna leave it at that I have heard from some people that if you increase this uh, actually decrease this I'm sorry you get better translucency uh, since I am printing with a clear pet G uh, but I'm just gonna stick with this for now and, and see how that that works for me um, the only real things I'm gonna be changing I will be doing two tests with this I'm gonna print two benchies so I'm gonna print a benchy at my 8% infill density which is what I usually print it uh, and then I'm gonna print one with a hundred percent infill I have also heard that uh, using a hundred percent infill gives it a lot more transparency so I guess I'll test both of them I do have two cure windows open uh, so I'll do that in both so let me make sure I change this over to the pet G all right Let's start with this one. I'm first gonna drop the Benchy in here, uh, which should I should have right here, 3 Benchy. Benchy. The standard boat, we've all seen it. Um, this guy right here, we're gonna print with no support, as I believe that's how you print these Benchies. I've actually never printed one, so this is gonna be my first Benchy. 
Um, build adhesion, a skirt, just to make sure that everything's printing properly. Uh, again, quality I'm gonna leave as I usually do. My infill now, I'm gonna change this to 100% on this particular uh, model. And I'm gonna make sure that the, most two, the two most important things are gonna be my material. Uh, from the research I have done, uh, I have seen that 245 seems to be the ideal temp uh, in terms of the nozzle. And then the bed, uh, I will actually leave at 70, which is what it recommends here. And I have seen other people recommend as well. So I'm gonna try this initially and see how that goes. See if it sticks properly and if it actually prints properly. Uh, my print speed, uh, 50 millimeters per second. I'm gonna leave as it is. That's usually what I print at. Cooling, 100% support i don't have any double plate adhesion let's go ahead and slice this and see how long it's going to take and three hours and 14 minutes is approximately what it's gonna uh, take to print this everything looks fine let me go do the same for the second one again this one the only difference on the actual file is that i'm gonna make the infill density the density that i usually make it so i'll go ahead and if i can find it of course 3d benchy Go ahead and drop it in, make sure it's generic PETG. -E um, again, quality is still the same, 0.16 layer height. Infill, this one's gonna be that 8% infill, which is what I usually print at. I wanna make sure that I'm trying the actual settings that I'm gonna try when I print the model, uh, like the figure, so that you know everything works properly. Material temp, again, 245, and we'll change it if we need to later. And, uh, lastly supports no supports on these alrighty so they are both sliced already and the one with eight percent is an hour and 39 minutes the one at 100 percent is three hours so you can see the big difference that the info does everything seems like it should print perfectly fine let's get these on an sd card and ready to print all right, the first one I'm gonna print is actually gonna be the 100% Benchy. It takes the longest, so I'll leave it printing overnight uh, and I'll get back to it in the morning. It should start preheating at 70 degrees on here. Uh, then also should start preheating to that 245, which is what I set it at, uh, and that should start shortly. All right, guys, the print has begun. Uh, I can't see too clearly in there, uh, but it seems like it is printing fine. At least the adhesion, at the very least, uh, seems to be holding pretty nicely. I don't see any type of peeling just yet. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this overnight and I'll come back tomorrow to either see a mess or a very good print. So I'll keep you posted. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty guys, it's been about two days. Everything is finally printed. Uh, it took me a while to get everything set up, but this is the end result. Yep, there you go. This this is what it looks like, minus the black one right there. Um, yeah, needless to say, it took me a couple tries. Um, it failed a lot more than I wanted it to, but don't worry, I did get it to work eventually. And here we go. The two models, one printed at 100% infill and one printed at 8% infill. You can definitely tell which one is which. Now, with PTG, I found that I do get a lot of stringing on the piece, so I, there's still a couple settings that I have to dial in. Uh, again, it took me a while. What I ended up doing is I printed at the 245 degrees for the nozzle, which is what I originally did. Uh, but then I had to bump the bed to 85 degrees i originally had 70 i bumped it all the way up to 75 because it was failing mid print it was coming loose from the build plate uh, but i was able to do it and it came out perfect now this right here is the eight percent infill model as you can see i mean it's not the most translucent thing let me see if i can pull up the flashlight real quick here it's definitely not the most translucent thing but it does let light shine through and it does have a little bit of transparency to it not the greatest thing but you could definitely see it shine a lot more than the 100% infill one so 
as you can see this one is a lot duller you can't really see through it as well um, so the lower infill the better the transparency you're gonna get with the print um, now I've, I have seen and heard that with 0% infill it's even better but of course I can't print these type of things with 0% infill um, regardless it's really not a viable option to print with 100% it was more for testing purposes so 8% which is what I usually print with anyways is definitely the way to go as I did mention most of the issues I had were with uh, bed adhesion it would adhere perfectly fine the first couple layers as you can see here it would adhere perfectly fine but then nope oh, that fell uh, during the middle of the print it would actually just plop out of the bed so bumping that temp up seemed to work uh, I really didn't change any other settings so everything was standard and oh and also I did use a brim for these uh, again for that ad added uh, adhesion to the build plate I think that's good with these uh, it showed me the testing that I want not as transparent as I would have loved but you know it still gets the job done it'll still give it a good effect uh, but these are you know garbage these are just the the benchies it's time to get to some real stuff so I'll go ahead and paint the figure that I wanted to paint originally the reason I did this just a glimpse because I don't want to spoil the whole statue for when I do that uh, but let's get that set up it should be from what I saw in Kira a two-day print so let's get it all right guys it's about two days later a very long print one of the longest ones I've actually done uh, but everything came out good here is the finished product and yes, if you follow any of my patrons again, you'll know what this is. So excited for this. Uh, a couple of things I do want to mention. As you can see, there is a lot of stringing here. Uh, I haven't removed the supports, so I will do that here on camera. Um, but as you can see, we do have a lot of stringing. I might have to dial in my print uh, settings a lot more. Um, I'll talk more about the details of this later. Let's get this these supports out of the way first. all right there we go this is the completed model the supports have been removed for the most part i still missed a couple areas uh, i have gone and put a match to most of these stringing areas to get that stringing out uh, a couple things i want to mention about this little project one the supports were actually a lot easier to remove than i initially thought um, i think it has to do with the uh, ptg being stronger it, it made it so much easier to take out the supports without actually breaking the PETG. Uh, I did use the regular support settings that I normally use, so it's not like I changed anything there. Uh, so I really think it has to do with the strength of the plastic. It is so strong indeed that it actually broke my printer. And no, I'm not kidding. It actually did break my machine. It broke the fan shroud half of my soul. Now, that's not to say that's gonna happen to you, but it did happen to me. I think what occurred was that as it was printing, uh, it did lift up from the bed. And the, again, the PTG is so strong that I think it hit the fan and instead of breaking the piece, it actually broke it. Uh, nothing crazy. I mean, I could always glue this together. Uh, probably some super glue should do. Uh, but do keep it in mind. Try to make sure that your bed is level. Now, I did mention that it was easier to remove supports, but as always, I mean, some areas did break off and it is kind of inevitable. Uh, you know that's it's the nature of fdm printing even if you are careful you can still break off some pieces but overall i feel like it came out quite nice now in camera it looks a lot redder it definitely does not look translucent uh that's going to be the only detail there uh i did all this for the translucency of it and it's not translucent 
It really isn't. It, it, I mean, you can kind of see through the infill, but it didn't give it a transparent look. Alrighty guys, there you go. So as you can see, it worked out. We were able to print with Pet G for the first time. Uh, it did give me some issues. And again, that fan did break. So is it worth it? No, I don't think it is. I don't think it's worth it, at least not in this application. Um, if you're looking for something to replace resin in terms of the, the look, the translucency of it, it doesn't do what you really expect. Uh, I could have gone and, and gotten away with Silky PLA to get this same result. And I still have to paint. Uh, I was planning on leaving the blood areas in this color but I don't know if I'm gonna end up doing that. Again, it didn't give me the results that I expected. I have gone ahead and started printing the lantern because you already know what this is. Uh, I started printing the lantern to see if that gave it a little bit more translucency, which is mostly what I wanna use it for, for those uh, constructs than the lanterns have. So we'll see with that one. But in terms of this actual application, I don't think it was really worth it. Again, I could have gotten away with doing some silky PLA, easier to print. No, cha no settings uh, needing to change or anything. If you're looking for strength in a piece, uh, this is definitely what you want to use. Again, it broke my machine. So in terms of the strength, in terms of the, the resistance to heat, it did really hold up really well. So if you're looking for something that, you know, maybe you want to leave outside or that requires a little bit extra strength, I want to say Pet G is probably the way to go. Um, all right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. It's a kind of a short one, but I hope you enjoyed it. Again, just trying some new things out. This actual build will be coming out soon, so you'll be able to see the entire figure. It is currently printing, so that will be coming up soon. Stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comment section down below how I can improve. As always, if you have any tips or tricks on making this more transparent or even you know tips and tricks in general of printing with Pet G, uh, that would greatly help. Uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed the video like, subscribe, all of that, and I'll see you next time.